Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of sharing your word once again. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, that, uh, that we can hear the Christmas story yet again, and, and the many different variations, as well as the ripples that extend outward from this Christmas story. Lord, we know that a, a large, and the, probably the dominant theme of this story is that of rejoicing. And Lord, there's, it's, there may not be a lot to rejoice about, at least we think, perhaps. And so, Father, teach us today the, the, the value of rejoicing in, in our anxieties, in all the things that cause us worry and fear in this day. So, Lord, we just thank you. May the words of my mouth, meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It says in Luke, the first chapter, verse, verse 14, it says, And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. And this theme of rejoicing is continued through, throughout the entire book of, of Philippians as we've been studying that. And, and we, we want to keep our finger always as in this Christmas season, uh, particularly as we, uh, as we approach the, uh, the, 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 the Christmas story itself and, and the, the, the 25th where we share about, about Luke chapter 2 and, and so on. But we're, we kind of just keep our finger in Luke chapter 1. And, and see if we can find some more things that that, uh, that that fit into that. But is Christmas hard for you this year? Maybe there's some real challenges that you're facing for the first time. Perhaps health. Perhaps uh, you know trials, uh, job, employment, uncertainty. Uh, there's just so many, many things that could make Christmas difficult. You know, I, I was reading an article uh, over well, sometime during this last month about the, 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 the struggle that people have, uh, even in terms of despairing of life itself. And the death rate for the first time is increasing, is what this article is talking about. The death rate itself was increasing because people have real, real struggles and difficulties over over the course of, of, of their their lives. But but perhaps even at Christmas, and perhaps you're sitting here today struggling and really despairing of life itself, thinking that perhaps nobody cares, nobody would miss me. And I guess the, the hope that I have for you is the hope of, of Elizabeth that we read there, or the, the uh, well, Elizabeth certainly uh, shared this word rejoicing. But, but even the, the, I believe it's the word of the angel. The angel said to Zacharias, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Of course, that refers to, to John, but it certainly has, has wider application to his very cousin, the Lord Jesus. But it says he will be great in the sight of the Lord, but you know, we can, uh, I think what Philippians teaches us is that we can rejoice. This word, Rejoice is used some 11 times in the book of Philippians. Some 11 times. The Apostle Paul, even, even after the fact, after the story of Christmas, after the, after the disciples had, had uh, went off, after Jesus had ascended into heaven, and you fast forward through Jesus' entire life and ministry, the disciples are now spreading the word of God, as, as we talked about, as, as, as even in the children's sermon, Judy mentioned about who's willing to go and spread the word. And they spread the word abroad, and now here is the Apostle Paul, one of the early converts, spreading the word of rejoicing to the church at Philippi. 
And that message, same message of rejoicing, whether it's for the birth of John the Baptist or the birth of the Christ child, is spread now to our congregation. Maybe Christmas is hard every year. A lot of tragedies happen and so on. Of course, that uh, often has a, has a sense of marking that season every time, every anniversary of that comes around. But why is Christmas a season of rejoicing? Why is Christmas a season of rejoicing? Well, first of all, it's because of the subject of the birth, the birth of Christ. Jesus was born at Christmas. What is the significance of Jesus' birth? What is the significance of the manger? Do you have a sense of, of, of the fact of, of, of what the manger means to you? Is it just a, a historical event? Is it just a, 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 a thing that happened in time? Is it just a sentimental story? Or can you say that I personally believe in the Christ of Christmas? I have dedicated my life to the person of Jesus Christ. There was a time in my life that I couldn't. I was afraid. I was, uh, I'll, I, I've told you that story. And maybe you're like me. You, you haven't quite sur fully surrendered and dedicated your life to the, to the, to the Christ of Christmas. Oh, maybe there's an excuse or two, uh, don't want to, uh, I want to live my own life, I want to have fun first, I want to, the, the list could go on and on. And we've talked about how, how many people have one foot in the church and one foot in the, and one foot in the world. And I'll tell you right now, if you have your foot in the world, you're going to be absolutely miserable. You cannot have joy and peace until you fully surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we talk about the church, we're not talking about just the outward trappings. We're not talking about uh, just some of the external things. We're talking about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, circumstances instead seem to dictate our attitude. We have a problem, and we, 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 we talk about, we, we laugh and joke about, about the hustle and bustle and, and the attitude of sometimes Christmas shoppers. I was reading a story this morning of one of my, one of my friends from years ago who, who, was, who was talking about how she went to a restaurant and the, and the, the waitress made a mistake on her bill and, and uh, she went to the UPS store to mail off a package and, and there was misunderstanding. She ended up paying for overnight. Uh, shipping and it was $70 and, 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 and she was just a absolute wreck. Has Christmas shopping and the whole Christmas thing made you an absolute wreck? So there's no rejoicing, just taking the joy completely out of it and you step back a little bit as this, as this uh, girl did. Well, she's a, she's a mom and a grandma and so on now, but I remember her from my youth group as, as a girl, but, but she steps back and she gets her head clear and realizes the true meaning. You see, circumstances so often seem to dictate our attitude. How is your attitude today? How is your attitude? Do you have a, 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 just a bitter attitude, a complaining attitude, a, uh, just, I didn't want to come here today. The Christ of Christmas died on Calvary's cruel cross for your sins, and he came to give you peace. He came to give you peace. I have written in the margin of my Bible this passage from Philippians chapter 4. We have peace of God as well as the God of peace, but he gives you peace this morning. God gives you peace. As he, as he comes to you. And it says, as, as, as was read earlier, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. So there we have that word twice listed in, in the fourth chapter. It's listed three times in the second and, and several times in the third, I believe it is. Let your gentleness be known to all the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Let's look at this briefly through the lens of Mary and Joseph. 
Let's take Philippians chapter 4 and look at it through the lens of Mary and Joseph as they were uprooted in the last, in last days of her pregnancy. And having to travel over land wasn't very far by our standards, but it was quite a ways by there. When she was so near to delivery. And through the lens, they could have had the absolute worst attitude. All the inconvenience. Don't, don't they realize, doesn't God know? And you know, ultimately, all of our complaints and bitterness is against God. Did you know that? Did you know that? We can't even complain about the weather when we're, we're complaining to God. Like we know we can do it better than He can. <laughs> but through the lens, they, they, they certainly did not have a lot to rejoice about. Well, the rejoicing continues from Matthew 2.10. It says, the wise men saw the star again, and they rejoiced. They rejoiced when they saw the star. The star of Bethlehem. Well, we don't have a star. Well, I guess maybe there is one up there. Luke 1.14, as, as I mentioned there for, for John the Baptist. Luke 1.28, rejoice for you're a highly, highly favored one. That's the angel speaking to Mary, I believe. And then Luke 147, my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Two, back, two verses past our, our gospel reading. That's the word rejoicing. Well, Paul says rejoice in the Lord always. And then he repeats it. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness, gentleness be known to all the Lord of the hand. Well, let's look at, at that. For in this text we have, first of all, a call to prayer. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. You know, one of the casualties of so often is the season as well as, as, as well as the hectic lives that we all live is the casualty of prayer. And I'm the first to admit, I, when I point a finger at you, I have three fingers pointing back at me as I think about our prayer life. But I pray for you. I stand in back there from time to time, and I don't do it enough, but I stand and I pray for, 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 for how you guys are all seated. That's why it's important that you all stay in one place. We got, we got people switched over here, and they're probably never going to sit over here again. Now. Or, or they will sit here forever, just to annoy me. No, you're not annoying me. But I pray for you. Because I can pray for that, that gang over there in the corner. You're a little switched up there today, too, I can see. And I pray for this gang over here on this side. And I pray for that gang over there in the, in the overflow. And I pray for you guys. That God would speak to your heart, whatever that means. Well, I know exactly what that means. <clears throat> that God would speak to your heart throughout the week. And apply this word as well as any other word that, 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 that he sees fit. And then he'll bring conviction in your life for the sin that you're living in. And then he will encourage you with the fears that you have. Well, first of all, it says here as we get this call to prayer, it says be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't be anxious about anything. What is anxiety but, but fear? And the angel told the shepherds, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all people. Under the call to prayer is the imperative of rejoicing. Let your gentleness, or your, uh, in, the, in the ESV in verse 5 it says, your reasonableness. And then the call to nothing is given to us here. Be anxious for nothing. And then the call to everything. But in everything, with prayer and petition. So you see that contrast in verse 6 between the nothing and the everything. You see that there in your Bibles. The answer for nothing but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It's literally requesting things of God. Don't ever be ashamed or afraid to bring to God your list. Your prayer list. Some people maybe have a feeling that, oh, I don't want to ask God for anything. He's too important. I don't want to bother him. No, bring to him your list. 
It says here right in the scripture to bring to him your request. Well, the second thing is, is we're called to meditate. In verse 8 it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, you see those adjectives there and those nouns? Just to meditate on these things. And you know, today there's so many things to meditate on. So many evil things to meditate. You know, Jesus said, if your right hand offends, you cut it off. Have you cut anything out of your life lately? I've had to cut a few things out of my life. Because they're distractions. And it takes away meditating on that which is pure. Is there any evil in your life that you're meditating? Any evil that's going on in your mind that you know is evil? Do what Jesus says. If your right hand offends you, cut it off. Get rid of it. Do whatever, take whatever steps you need to, but, but, but get rid of it so that you can meditate on what is good and honorable and, and so on. This, this whole list of truth, nobility, purity, lovely, and good report. Because you want to have that peace of God. God wants to bring his peace into your life. God wants to bring his peace. That's what God does. When God draws near, he brings you peace. He, he brings you peace. And we need peace today. We need peace today. We've already established that Christmas is a difficult time for many people. You need peace in your home. And God wants to bring peace into your home. You need peace into your marriage. And God wants to bring peace into your marriage. You need peace in your life. We need peace in our church. We need peace in our community. And we need peace in our county, in our state, in our country. We need God to bring that peace. That's the gospel. The peace of God. Well, lastly, it's the call to imitate. And so then, verse 9, it says, The things which you learned and received and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So there's not only the peace of God in verse 7, but there's the God of peace in verse 9. The God of peace will be with you. That's what you want, the God of peace to be with you. Is the God of peace your companion in this life? And it says, learned and received and heard and saw. What have you learned lately? Are you learning anything? What have you learned lately? That's what it says in verse, verse 9. You look at there. The things which you have learned. Put them into practice. Put them, uh, these things do. It says in the New King James. But in, I believe in the NIV it says, put them into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Learn the things of God, my dear friends. Learn the things of God. Well, this is a passage about things. Isn't that great? It's about things. This is a passage. It's all about things. We need to talk about things. You might think, what? Did I change the channel? Did the pastor flip over to another set of notes or something? We need to talk about things. The first thing we need to talk about is nothing. Nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for no thing. So don't be anxious. And the other thing we need to talk about is everything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, bring it to God. Bring everything to God. And then the other thing we need to talk about is whatever things. And whatever things are things like truth, nobility, purity, loveliness, and a good report. Those are the good things, whatever things, that we can dwell upon and that we can meditate on during this Christmas season. And you know, Mary, the young gal, the young person, Mary, and we don't know how old either of them were, but, but uh, it says 
in Luke 2, 2, 20, I think it is. And Mary treasured up all of these things. And what? Pondered them. Pondered them in her heart. You see, these are attitudes. It's all about attitudes, friend. What is your attitude? Are you, are you irritated this morning? Are you frustrated? Or do you have the sense of rejoicing? Are you like my friend from my youth group years ago who I just read her post? She was talking about the restaurant and the UPS store. Are you, are you just irritated about all of these little distractions? Well, the Bible says, be anxious for no thing, for nothing. Leave it be, leave it be. Do not fear. And allow God to be God. And allow God to be the God of peace. The God of peace in your heart this Christmas. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Lord, we do ask that you would help us to be the God of, or that you would be the God of peace in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake.